Lucas. Hi there, I'm Lukas. I'm at the KS Devices booth. I will show you our new modules, the five of them. The first one, the largest one, is uh, Sofia. It's an analog oscillator. The sound is built with two ripple components superimposed on the uh, warm, slightly saturated bass tone. Now we are introducing the ripple components that can sound kind of like four months. Each uh, component has the same set of controls. The first one is the warp, which adjusts the distribution of the ripples within the single period of the main wave. The ratio adjusts the uh, frequency ratio of the ripple components to the uh, main pitch. It can be set uh, statically, like this, like so, uh, or it can follow the main pitch. The damping is a uh, acts like a resonance control on a filter. It damps the uh, uh, the decay of the of the ripple components envelope, which is available at these two outputs. And we have a mixer for the uh, for the two components. So now we're hearing only the, the left one, now we're hearing only the right one. The components can be either sine wave shape or square shape. Here we have a mix uh, of the fundamental only and the ripple components. Each component can be adjusted individually. So I can do Formants can do vowels. It can do harsh, hard sing-like sounds. It can do woody. It's especially uh, nice to self-patch it because uh, not only every parameter is under the voltage control, but it also features six outputs. This is the main uh, audio output, but we also have two separate outputs uh, for each ripple component and uh, fundamental sine wave output and two impulse outputs, which are the envelopes uh, that uh, control the decay of the ripple components. Uh, also, we have two uh, frequency modulation inputs, one for global, for everything, uh, pitch and the frequency of the uh, ripple components as well, and one just for, for the main pitch. So, if you couple, if you self-patch it, you can have some really, really nice crazy sounds. The second new module we have for you is the uh, Koshalin, which is a stereo uh, frequency uh, shifter. Now we hear Sofia through Koshalin. It's a stereo frequency shifter. It features two pairs of outputs, one for the signal upshifted and one for downshifted. The uh, frequency shift control in the middle, you can do positive, you can do negative. You've got three ranges uh, from up to 50 hertz, up to 500 hertz and up to 5k, both ways of course. Uh, it also features uh, feedback with the feedback amount uh, control and the density of the feedback control as well. Uh, three feedback modes. Up is uh, the regular one, the module works just as labeled. When the switch to the left, the contents of the output is switched, which you can of course do manually with the uh, frequency shift knob as well. But the most interesting one is the, is the one to the right, uh, the combi in which the uh, uh, left channel takes the upshifted signal to the feedback path 
and the right channel takes the downshifted signal through the feedback path. The feedback stops just shy of self-oscillating, so you can use uh, so you can use uh, any trigger or clock source to ping it. You can use the uh, feedback amount and feedback density to control the character of the pinging you're hearing with the frequency control available as well of course. And the last nice feature is the, uh, the two uh, frequency modulation inputs, one for exponential frequency modulation so you can dial a very very subtle modulation to get those nice beating uh, frequencies and the second one is the linear through zero frequency modulation input so you can use Koshalin as a uh, with any sound source you can use it as a one operator frequency modulation um, oscillator with so you can change the timbre without changing the pitch of the of the sound also the dual nature of the of the module the fact that it's stereo allows us um, some, to do some pretty crazy stuff like we can uh, use just a single mono input and use one of the say upshifted outputs process it externally and then return back to the second input of Koshalin and listen to the downshifted out uh, so we get the same frequency that we have input but the sound character uh, is much much very very different because uh, it has been processed uh, externally while being shifted up and now we're hearing to the original frequency but a different sound uh, altogether. So um, are these two uh, kind of ready to go or what's the kind of time scale with these two? Animals? Koshalin is uh, being produced uh, right now so it's not far off from uh, hitting the stores. Uh, Sofia uh, should take about a couple of months, so we, we're hoping for July uh, for it being, to be uh, available at stores. And uh, is there any uh, price point uh, available for uh, Yeah, uh, Sofia should be around 490 euro and uh, Koshalin 330. Brilliant. Um, so we've got a few other modules to look at, but we just need to do a bit of repatching. So sure. We'll be back in a second. So ready when you are? I am. <laughs> Uh, the third module we've introduced at Superbook 22 is GEA. It's another component of the Leibniz uh, subsystem. GEA works kind of like Lipsk, but while Lipsk inverts bits, GEA performs a uh, logic end operation. So with all the switches uh, uh, lit up, it uh, bypasses signal, but you can use it to mute uh, individual bits you can use it to quantize the uh, uh, CV signal to any number of states. Now it, it will output only 16 states. Of course, you can uh, you can do it manually, but you can do it externally as well with any square wave or trigger. Inverting the higher bits gives much more pronounced uh, results and the second uh, new module is Potsdam this is a router uh, or a switcher uh, depends on how you look at it it takes two Leibniz uh, inputs and uh, routes it routes one of them to uh, to its output so uh, you can uh, either switch by pushing this button or you can uh, switch it with an external signal so just so I know what's going on and so the viewers at home know what we've got what have we got coming into the, uh, we have, the subsystem uh, we're inputting uh, a uh, just a filtered output of Sofia into Dresno and uh, no, no, this is the Odessa, the Odessa Fundamental, so it's just a sine wave. Uh, and we're inputting it into Dresna and we're switching between two chains of Leibniz modules. 
with the pods down. So now, say, now uh, the signal is affected by, by Gera, and now it's not. Uh, so this one gives uh, a very, very straightforward and simple uh, and easy to grasp control over a patch that can be very, very complex as almost anything within the Leibniz 8-bit subsystem is. But uh, Podgenam is not only a switcher, uh, it also uh, is very useful for reclocking your uh, Leibniz modules or any other modules in your modular as well. It features its own clock generator that goes from almost 0 Hz up to uh, almost 2 MHz. And uh, you can, we can use it to, to clock Dresna or you can use it to clock any other modules. Uh, it's got three switches, three ranges of, uh, of uh, the clock, clock, so in the kilohertz, in the hertz and in the megahertz. So depending on, uh, on your uh, use, you, you can use this switch. The rate is uh, controlled, uh, is under voltage control, so we can you can uh, you can uh, use any LFO or an envelope to to change it in real time. Uh, it also uh, features two uh, sockets. One is uh, these are this might look a bit mysterious because this one this is an output for the incoming clock, and this is an input for the outgoing clock. What it means is that uh, you can uh, use this output to take the Leibniz clock that goes into Potsdam and use it anywhere else in your system and you can use this input to inject an external clock and send it via the uh, Leibniz header further to, to the Leibniz uh, subsystem. And uh, the last module we've introduced is the simplest one, is the, uh, it's a uh, triple summing mixer called Sopot. It's got three uh, sections, so 12 uh, signal sources you can, uh, you can mix. We've labeled those mix left, mix right, mix mono, but you can use them anywhere you, anyhow you, uh, you want to. But uh, the, the easiest purpose is to, use, to take four uh, stereo signals and use these two sections to mix them and use these two outputs to, for, for example, to input to Praga, while you, because you, otherwise you would lack the inputs. And uh, both of those uh, have, uh, I mean, the middle section is normal to, to uh, each of those. Uh, you can turn off the normalization, you can send the, uh, uh, the signal from, the, from this uh, section downwards upwards both at the same time you can attenuate them very very um, easy hands-on and uh, quite useful utility so uh, when when are we hoping to kind of have these new modules uh, ready uh, and what are the price points on those all of those are in production as we speak uh, as for the prices i will have to consult a magnificent poster uh, potsdam 210 euros um, Gera 160 and uh, support where is it? Support uh, 90 euro. Brilliant. Well, Lucas, thanks. Thank you Cheers. very much. Cheers. Bye bye.